Welcome to Keene State College's Speedy Portfolio Review Webinar. Thanks for joining us. These students have done some great work. Um, so following our intro today, uh, two students will present a brief overview of our manufacturing enterprise project where they engineered and built high quality custom designed computer desks. Then each student will present some highlights of their work. Um, then we'll wrap up with questions and comments from all of you. Um, there is a Q&A feature, um, usually at the bottom of your screen, where you can enter comments and questions um, at any time during the presentation. And so you don't have to wait till the end of the presentation to enter your comments. So here we go. Welcome, I'm Dr. Lisa Hicks, and welcome to our Senior Portfolio Showcase for our sustainable product design and innovation majors here at Keene State College. We didn't want you to miss this glimpse of the work of these accomplished students, so we're coming to you via webinar this year. These students have really rallied to change gears, to change up their tech, to change their operating modes, and have continued to build on their teamwork skills that they've learned throughout their time in the Speedy program. These students value research to understand the needs of end users. They value the process of design thinking to take us from end user needs to functional prototypes and useful products. They're curious about how things are made. And in spite of the last six weeks, they've built many models and prototypes using a multitude of classical and digital manufacturing technologies. They've managed their projects for efficiency and calculated costs of production using multiple manufacturing engineering techniques. And they've explored both positive and detrimental impacts on human health and the environment. So they understand the choices in the product design and development process. So they're well equipped to help us move towards a more sustainable future. Our showcase today includes projects showing the students' design processes and the skills they bring to the table. So behind every one of these projects is a whole lot of work and a whole lot of learning. And the students have been developing the skills and knowledge and the values that many companies that make things, our manufacturing industries, really value. So Molly O'Connor and Liam O'Hagan will start us off with a brief view of this uh, team's whole class project for their manufacturing enterprise course. And then each student will follow with highlights of their own work. So welcome again to our Speedy Senior Portfolio Showcase for 2020. Okay, hi, I'm Molly O'Connor. And my name is Liam O'Hagan. And this is our um, project that we did in Manufacturing Enterprise, just a little summary. So um, for our Manufacturing Enterprise class, we were tasked with redesigning and um, producing custom desks for our ideation classroom in the TDS building. Uh, there are 16 of us and we worked effectively as a team to make these desks. <clears throat> so some functional requirements uh, for the desk. Uh, we needed to organize and have covers for the computer and wires. This was to reduce clutter and disorganization of the desks. We also needed to allow flexible furniture arrangements to support the fluid classroom activity. So things including individual work, small group work, and large group work. We needed to provide alternate user-friendly USB ports so students had easier access to charging their devices. Uh, each unit needs to fit the curvature of the pods. So we, had, uh, we have custom pods in the classroom and we needed the desk to match the curvature of those pods. Um, we needed to align with the theme of the classroom. So our, our classroom and uh, in the speedy department for, um, for us, we have, uh, we have kind of like unique a unique classroom so we needed unique custom look to go to match with our unique classroom interface and we needed to protect the computers from damage so they needed to be strong durable and and classroom proof so they could withstand kicks and backpacks from resting up on them and so on and so forth 
So the Gantt chart, we used a Gantt chart to plan and schedule the project. Um, this tool was a great help with keeping students on track as with production. And that the Gantt chart was also critical for planning machine schedules to maximize efficiency on the production floor. So no one was wasting time waiting for a machine that was in use because in production time is money. Um, so this is um, a network diagram and it's another way um, for project planning and management. Um, with the information from the Gantt chart, we were able to create this network diagram. Um, this is the diagram that can, or this diagram can help future, um, future manufacturers stay on top of all necessary tasks for completion. Um, using this diagram, we were able to figure out which parts were the most important parts for completion. And you can see that um, those parts are highlighted on the right there. So part numbers, we had to design our own system for organizing all of our parts in the assembly. And to do this, we assigned each part, assembly and fixture, a number, and we created a spreadsheet to keep track of all those parts and their associated numbers. So the spreadsheet included the part number, the description of the part, the quantity of the parts in the assembly, and the status of the part. So whether it was already made or if it was still needed to be made and also the jigs and fixtures that were needed to manufacture each individual part. So this helps students keep organization of their CAD models of the parts that had already been manufactured of parts that still needed to be manufactured, and all the required jigs and fixtures for each individual part to be made. A process sheet. So each student was assigned with a part to manufacture and the students were required to create a process sheet for their individual part. The process sheet included all steps required to manufacture the part starting from the beginning up to the finish of the part. And the process sheet greatly contributed towards helping students create a process for manufacturing their parts, along with standardizing a manufacturing process for each part. So work instructions. Uh, Students were then required to create work instructions from their process sheets. And the work instructions included a description with pictures and diagrams of the process to make each part. And this allowed any student to be able to manufacture any of the parts simply just by following these work instructions. So while making the desks, we had to keep track of all of our expenses. Um, above is the costing sheet for the materials and a spreadsheet that helped us figure out how many hours um, each desk took. Um, with this information, we were able to calculate the final cost of one desk. individually. Uh, here we have a learning curve. It shows our improvement in the production process. The first desk took us about uh, 480 hours to complete, and then the second desk um, we did it mass production. We made um, six of the other ones together, but it took about 90 hours, um, which is a really big difference. Uh, the, that means that we improved about 118%, which is really good because like Liam said, time is money. Um, the photos here, they show the um, original design uh, prototypes. And then, um, so you can see the, the changing as it goes. Um, the photos, um, sorry. It was important to know the original prototypes in order to perfect the final and so we were able to find out which ideas were already used on those prototypes and we didn't have to try and make any tweaks without, with, um, for wasting time. Um, we learned a lot doing this project and left, with, left this class with an abundance of new skills. Hello, my name is Maxwell Tucker and I'm a sustainable product design innovation graduate with a minor in management. And a few things about me is I really like motorcycles and rebuilding cars. So this is my design for manufacturing project, which is a snap on three H drive ratchet. I disassembled the ratchet and measured all the components to then create a CAD model. To help me solve what each part material was. After finding out the materials, I then needed to do research on the processes that were required to make each part. After I had the materials and the processes, I was able to cost my labor times and use Snap-on's annual report of gross profit to then find the manufacturing cost for the product. 
So I've been an intern at Amatech Pressy Tech in Keene for the past four and a half years now. So we make ultra precision machines for diamond turning, milling and grinding that are used in the manufacturing of optics, molds and mirrors. I started out there as a CNC machinist and then I was able to move into the engineering department. And I've been on the Opto 60 project, which is the photo on the right hand side, which is a precision lathe that makes contact molds and other small optics. I did a lot of work on the large assembly of the machine, as well as a lot of the other mechanical processes that go into it. So the photo on the left is a tooling plate layout, which I've been working on, making sure that we can fit other tooling onto future builds onto the plate. That's been a very informative experience working for them. So this is my product design two project, which is a watch storage box. I needed to create a product out of planar materials without using adhesives, so it could be recycled and reused at the end of its life. I created this product using oak wood, acrylic, and screws. The dividers are friction fit into the baseboard, and then there's a long wooden cap piece that's screwed down onto it. So this edge piece also is used to keep the watches securely held into each of the pockets. And by using this concept, it made the product easier to disassemble and recycle at the end of its life. So the charge-up battery is a half semester project that I did for product design too. It's an electric car charger, which has a lot of visual appeal and attraction, and it's supposed to attract new users and to question its purpose really. Also, I want to design it to teach the users and the public like what it actually was and what it did. So I was able to take this project to multiple academic conferences, and then I received the Fenton Family Automotive Design Scholarship from it. So this was the whole class project that was explained previously for our manufacturing enterprise class. It was, well, I was in charge of doing the SOLIDWORKS models and the prints for the manufacturing. The project had many redesigns that needed to be addressed and a large assembly needed to be proofed for proper fitment. I also created an online vault in Microsoft OneDrive and this helped me keep all the most recent parts and drawings uploaded into one place. And also the whole class had access to that OneDrive folder, which made it easier for manufacturing to access the parts, the prints, and all the other information for it. And one thing I really enjoyed about the Speedy program was the product design classes. I was able to pick topics that really interested me and I could be challenged with solving them. Thank you. Hi, if you forgot, I'm Molly O'Connor. <laughs> um, I'm a four-year varsity athlete here at Keene State. Um, I'm motivated, I'm committed, I'm organized, and I'm a good leader. Um, between swimming and working at the um, Hole in the Wall Gang Camp, which is a camp for kids with serious illnesses, I feel like I have enough discipline and open-mindedness to say that these are qualities about myself. Um, this is a project I did in product design too. We were asked to create an organizational device, so I figured why not organize my makeup. Um, you can see my design process starting with original sketches through the final product. My main goal for this design was to make something durable and um, easy to transport so I wouldn't have to move my makeup around when I was traveling. Um, I'm a certified SOLIDWORKS associate. These are some models that I've made. Um, the part on the middle left was a project for my advanced CAD class where everyone in the class was assigned a part. Um, of a lawnmower engine, I got a carbon uh, in carbon take. Um, we had to take the physical part, measure it, and then create the part on SOLIDWORKS so that our whole class could come together and make a full assembly of the lawnmower engine. The next three slides that I have are for the manufacturing enterprise class that we um, presented earlier. We were tasked with redesigning and mass producing seven desks. Um, that a previous student had made for his product design three class. Uh, the idea was to have a multifunctional desk for one of our classrooms in the TDS. Um, the CAD models below are the parts that I was assigned. Eventually we split into two groups and um, those were the engineering and manufacturing groups. I was moved into engineering where I worked on Pareto charts, um, accounting analysis, and some other documentation as well. So this is the other documentation that I was working on. Um, I compiled a binder that contained everything needed to make the desk. So some of these things were uh, process sheets, work instructions, a SWOT analysis, um, 
and some other project timelines like the Gantt chart and the network diagram. Um, on the bottom right is the network diagram that I made. Once I made the network diagram, I was able to do a forward pass and a backward pass, which is just simple math to figure out the time it took for each part to finish or be made. And I was able to figure out the critical path, which is circled, as you can see. So those are the most important parts that we have. And once we figure that out, um, it made manufa the manufacturing process go smoother. Um, for my product design and my for my uh, design for manufacturing and assembly class, I decided to reverse engineer a Birkenstock, um, which are there's a shoe made in Germany. Um, so I researched the process and all the materials involved and to make the shoe. And then with that, I was able to figure out how much it cost to make a pair of Birkenstocks. And then just to double check all of my work, we use SolidWorks to evaluate it, to evaluate the materials and everything um, and to make sure that um, our calculations were correct. So this is a project that I did in product design two. Um, I worked with Harlow Farm in Vermont and we went up there because they're having a watering issue in their greenhouses. And um, after doing a lot of observational research and talking to the farm manager, I decided that I was going to make a product that protected the sprinkler heads um, in, in the greenhouses. And after um, doing that, making multiple um, prototypes to figure out the shape. I created a SOLIDWORKS model and then we 3D printed it. So for product design three this year, I was assigned with a team to produce an interactive museum exhibit for the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center in Concord, New Hampshire. Um, after lots of research, my team and I decided to produce a color cannon exhibit where the kids would be able to play with lights while learning about additive light. Um, you can see on the Gantt chart in the top right that it's highlighted blue, half of it's highlighted blue. That is all the dates that were impacted by COVID-19 and we couldn't get into the shop. Um, luckily, we were still able to produce the colorful, or the colorful light cannon that you see in the bottom with, by 3D printing and CAD models. Um, and then we have a final CAD model on the right of the entire um, structure and what it's going to look like in the museum. Hi, my name is Ryan Connolly. Um, I'm here to show you a couple of the projects that I worked while working on my major. Um, so I'm detailed, adventurous, hardworking. Um, I also love to ski and I love to surf and be with my dog, Winston. Um, so this is a project that we worked on in product design two. And the design challenge was to create it with no adhesives or planar materials. Um, so my project, it's meant to be held next to your nightstand or on top of it. And it holds a phone, a watch, um, a laptop, and a cup of water, all the things that you need next to your bed. And it charges them also. Uh, so this is part of my manufacturing enterprise class. So the challenge was to create a back panel that would curve around the pods in, in the class. So uh, we came up with three trials, uh, but we ended up going, up going with trial C, which was curving a section so that bends properly along this back. This was the other thing that I was tasked with during manufacturing enterprise, and that was the accounting portion, as Molly mentioned earlier. And I had to make a table of materials and each of their costs, and then add up their totals to get the total MSRP of each desk. This was for, this was for my product design three cl class, and the challenge was uh, we had to create a project that the STEM campers could take home. And we also had to educate them about optical principles. And my solution to that was to create a nightlight for them almost that uh, shined on their ceiling and they could pick any constellation they want and the constellation would be shined up onto the ceiling. 
this was my internship that I worked. It's in Springfield. Um, I worked there in the summer of 2019 um, at CHD. I was required to configure new equipment, assemble an image and deploy new, new devices to new employees and manually take inventory of over 200 computers because they were doing a switch from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Um, what I enjoyed most about this major is uh, learning to do SolidWorks. Uh, it's a program that I've always wanted to learn. Um, thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Evan Freddy. Uh, along with my bachelor's degree, I'm also a I also minor in business management. Uh, a few things about myself: I like to travel, I enjoy hiking, um, pretty much anything that gets me outside. I'm also a part-time graphic designer. I'm persistent and self-reliant. Uh, this is my product design three project where we make a product of our choosing and learn every step how to make the product from user research to manufacturing the final prototype. I love designing clothes and shoes, so I tried to reinvent the shoe sole by making a detachable suit shoe sole. Shoe sole. Um, my original goal for this product was to allow users to take the bottom of the sole off at the front door so they so it doesn't um, track in dirt or snow and they can keep their house clean and while also wearing their shoe. But after creating this product, I learned that there are many applications for this product other than what I attended it for, such as interchangeable shoes, like a running sole, a uh, hiking sole, or one with spikes on the bottom for football or soccer. And these are some of my ideation sketches, um, original proof of concepts, and my final cat drawings. This is um, kind of how everything is made. It's the the upper on the on the top part of my uh, slide. It's made by a traditional method where you design your you design your uh, shoe on the last, then you transfer your design over to the desired material, cut it out, sew it up, and form it around the last. And on the bottom, this is my final 3D printed, um, this is my final 3D printed sole bottom with the, that shows the interlocking rail systems and how it works. And next one. Uh, this is my final functional prototype. Um, so my, um, my part in this manufacturing enterprise class, I was challenged with creating a better method for attaching the uh, top and bottom sub-assembly. Uh, the previous one was just they screwed from the top and bottom, uh, and it kind of slowed down and hindered the process of lamination and made it difficult to uh, work with and maneuver around. So my solution was to create a uh, laser cut router template that... Um, uh, that uses a groove and spline method to simply, so you put the router down, you put the template down, and you router out uh, a groove and insert the spline, glue it up, and your product is ready. Uh, this is the, uh, this is my portion on the low cost mechatronics trainer on our automatics and automation class. Um, this taught us the basics of automation and PLC coding. I was challenged to create and assemble this sorting arm and sorting tray. Uh, this is uh, just a little background. This is a candy dispenser. And mine was to separate and distinguish the difference between there's white cups and black cups. They're different sizes. Um, and I did this by uh, following a step-by-step -step wiring diagrams to create the hydraulic actuator. Um, I 3D printed all the red parts that you see and um, cut the sorting trays to length. <clears throat> this is my uh, 3D, some of my 3D CAD um, drawings in my 3D CAD class. Um, <clears throat> I uh, through this class, I was able to learn and apply features that I learned, such as extrudes, loss, sweeps, revolves, and knitting. 
I'm also a certified associate in 3D CAD. Uh, this is my online business, Good Boy. Uh, in my uh, this is the logo that I created, and in my spare time, I screen print these shirts and sell them online and by word of mouth. So far, I've sold over 150. Uh, this is my competitive manu manu manufacturing project where I chose to optimize storage and workflow of our speedy wood shop. Uh, the current state of the wood shop is uh, storage is difficult to retrieve wood because it's stacked on top of each other. And if you need a piece in the middle, you have to take out many other pieces um, to get to your piece and then put them back. Can cause This can cause injury. Um, there's also miscellaneous scrap pieces all over the floor and on the sides limiting the walking area. Um, this is uh, my theoretical improvement. Because of this virus, I was not able to implement it. But in theory, I would, using these methods, such as the fishbone diagram and Pareto chart, to find out what was the biggest source of issue that we had. Um, I came up with a kind of diagonal wood storage to save space. And it would allow the students to just grab their piece, not have to move any other piece, um, and get it out, get in, in and out quickly. Uh, this would also allow us to put narrower racks on the sides of the storage. So um, for the, because you don't have to house the four by eight plywood, um, this creates four more extra feet of storage in that wood lab. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kevin Erickson. Um, so some things about me, um, I'm innovative, creative, determined, outgoing, I'm a problem solver, and I'm a prototyper. Uh, I like going uh, off-road in my Jeep, I like hiking and hunting the outdoors. Uh, so this is my no-rock automotive sway bar that I made. Um, I started with a CAD design, as you can see on the left. I manufactured different parts and components for it. Um, and you can see a video on the right that I made of me testing uh, this sway bar. You can see it starts in the locked position. The sway bar is unlocked and it has free range of motion. And now it is locked again. And that's done by a uh, air actuated um, piston. So this is the no-rock uh, sway bar installed on my Jeep. Um, I used brass and Delrin bushings, um, so the components would last long uh, after a lot of use. I also had to make custom adjustable sway bars so that you can adjust the height that the, that the torsion bar is at. Um, and then I have a video here of it in action on the Jeep. There are controls inside the vehicle that I use to switch it um, from open to close. Uh, so for product design two, uh, this is my tool tray organizer. I started with the cardboard prototype that I made. I just wanted to be able to separate and organize my tools and have room for miscellaneous parts and, and stuff like that. Uh, so this you can see on the right, it's my final design. I made it out of wood and metal, and it's very durable and heavy duty. Uh, so here you can see I have all my tools sorted out in the organizer. I have things in the middle of the organizer. Um, the tool slots are adjustable, so I can put different size tools in the tool tray. Um, the handle folds down and uh, there's room for miscellaneous items in the middle. So it makes it really nice to, to be able to organize things in my messy toolbox. So in uh, design for manufacturing, I uh, took apart and measured a knife, a hunting knife that I have. Um, I made a dimensioned drawing of the knife to scale. Um, and mainly I did this so that I can, um, I needed to figure out the actual volume of material used in the handle. And since the handle is a complex shape on the knife, I needed to have a detailed model and diagram of it so that I can figure out the volume of the material. And so here on the right side, you can see 
I made uh, different components in SolidWorks, and I had to put them together to make a complete knife. Um, so uh, we use two different sheets uh, in the class to determine the material and labor cost. Um, so using these two these two sheets, I was able to get within five percent of the retail cost of the knife. Um, and so the actual retail cost was 189, uh, and I was able to get it within 5% of that. Um, some takeaways that I can uh, say about being in the Speedy program: um, I really enjoyed being able to have um, basically an open mind, being able to uh, create, design things, and be able to go in the shop and actually make it and tweak it, and be able to see all the processes and the steps from start to finish. I think that's a really valuable thing to be able to do. And not a lot of places uh, have the the right resources that that allow you to do that. But I, that's something I really enjoyed in the Speedy program. Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Cam Kenyon, and these are my portfolio slides. Here's just a little bit about myself. Uh, I enjoy skiing, sailing, and working on other small engines and large projects. Some of my skills include SolidWorks, being hands-on, creative, dependable, and thorough, and I also enjoy tinkering with any sort of small motors or projects. For my manufacturing enterprise class, I was given the opportunity of creating the side edge faces of the bottom row of the desk. If you look at the pictures to the right of the slide, you'll see the prototypes in my template. Uh, my first prototype and also uh, routing the side edges of the edge face and final uh, the final product on the actual uh, bottom of the desk. Here's a brief overview of the process sheet I made for this and everything from tools and estimated times had to be recorded as for everyone else, and the sheet functions as a step-by-step -step guide of fabricating the part. So if anyone in the future need, needed to actually create this part, they would have step-by-step -step instructions of how long it would take and with some step-by-step -step pictures of how it was done. For product design two, I was given the opportunity of creating a desk organizer. And the inspiration for this was just because my desk in my room was extremely cluttered and I needed a way to uh, find all my tools and utilize the area. And in response to recreating this, I some of the functional requirements include the ability to provide a design space for bulky tools such as glue guns and create a more user-friendly work environment. Some of the requirements were to use no uh, to use planar materials no, and no adhesives, so I, I wasn't allowed to use glue, and everything had to be cut exactly to specifications. If you look at the bottom, you'll see my first sketch, my prototype, and uh, even a cardboard mock-up I have uh, before I made some of my final re revisions. For this project, uh, it was the office work environment I was tasked with uh, interviewing and exploring. Uh, some of the user interface design research I did was that many of the issues affected in the office work environment from small workplaces to clutter and con confinement. And most common complaint of office employees is that there was no sense of privacy and uh, no sense of openness of, of space to, uh, and uh, the openness of space allowed every voice and sound to be heard. So there was uh, just not, it was, wasn't a very user-friendly area. And for improving the work environment, I decided to make a headrest that was designed to reduce distractions in the cubicle setting. And after conducting research and surveys, uh, here are some of the pictures of the prototype and the final product. Final product is a headrest that has sides with dampened hinges for adjustability so the user can have it whichever angle they want. 
uh, with sound deadening foam to actually reduce noise. The headrest is compatible with those side mounts I talked about. The tension hinges for a smooth adjustability without tools to have to tighten and loosen. And it mounts to the top of any chair for ease of in installation. Some of the things I really took from this uh, product design program was how much goes into actually manufacturing a product and how everything needs to work as a system. Thank you. Hi, I'm Connor Foodie. I'm a major in product design and a minor in business management. In design for manufacturing assembly, I chose to design a broken disassemble a broken fuel pump. I had I had to find out what each part of the pump is made of. I did research and drew parts and saw works to help me determine what each of the parts are made of. I did research on how each part was made. And with that information, I was able to make a costing labor sheet of what it would cost to make one fuel pump. In, man, in manufacturing enterprise, the class was given a task to work on the workstation for our speedy lab. Each person was assigned the part on the station to make and to make up work construction for. My part was the faceplate on the lower part of the station. We were divided into two groups, one being manufacturers and one being engineers. I was engineering, making the CAD models for the jigs and the jig catalog. In product design two, we had an assignment on how to make a healthier lifestyle. I chose transportation and how we could get people to be more interested in using electric cars. I did lots of research on electric cars and their chargers to see how they work. I came up with several different ideas and ended up going with a lightning bolt idea. The lightning bolt idea was designed to communicate function. The lightning bolt is similar to the one you would use when you, what you see when you plug in your phone to charge. With the design, it will let people know that it's a charger of some sort from a distance. And then when they went go to go to check it out, they would find out that this is made from an electric car. I received awards and scholarships for this project. My internship at American Homage started in January of 2019. I started off in production assembly, learning how to build various assemblies. And then eventually I moved on to know how to fully build a machine and test it. Back in February, I started an internship with the manufacturing and manufacturing engineer department on a little side project they had in the dis for the display room. In advance SOLIDWORKS class, we learned how to use and when to use advanced techniques in molding like sweep, like sweeps, lofts, sheet metal, and more. I had to use those skills in doing a whole class project of a two-stroke steel leaf blower engine. With all the parts combined, we had to assemble the engine. And then I had the ability to take the associate's exam, which I did take and I am certified in. And Product Design 3, we had to find a problem area that needed to be fixed. I found that the crosswalks in some areas are not the best. I had to research on what areas would already exist and finding out that not all of those work 100% of the time. They all have flaws. I made several prototypes and, and had numerous ideas. The idea I went with was to make a light that would light up the whole crosswalk from end to end to show drivers that there's a either a pedestrian waiting to cross the road or one is crossing the road. And then one takeaway I had from the Speedy program was the product design classes. I liked how you were able to pretty much design what, what you wanted to when, and as long as you follow the guidelines. And thank you. So my name is Ben Brady. In my time at Keene, I earned a BS in Speedy with a minor in mathematics. Uh, in the fall, I'll be attending the University of New, uh, New Hampshire to receive a mechanical engineering degree. A little bit about me, uh, I'm organized, willing to learn, analytical, just to name a few. 
as you can see by my pictures, I enjoy the, I enjoy the outdoors, whether it be hunting, fishing, or just trailing in my Jeep. I've got two children pictured, my dog, which I nicknamed the wild child, and my Jeep, which I nicknamed the problem child. So a little about my background. Uh, for the past five years, I've worked at Wheelan Engineering. Four of those years I spent on facilities maintenance where I worked under an electrician. I learned a lot and moved up to the printed circuit board division where I was a machine technician. Um, my first project I was working, I was rebuilding a pump in waste treatment and when one of the chemistry tanks needed to be pumped out, I noticed that the tank didn't have any plumbing for a direct sump, so I set out to alleviate the problem. The solution was simple, yet it saved the worker time and strain, as the method before wasn't ergonomically correct. As for a majority of my time, I spent working with other machine maintenance technicians, the engineering department, and the machine shop to correct continuously building pressure in an electrolytic plating tank. I calculated volume flow rates of the in and outs, and I worked with and implement, uh, excuse me, I work to implement and monitor the solutions. For my product design three class, I chose to work and uh, I chose to work with those involved with the Go STEM camp that is run in the summers at Keene State. My goal was to create a high quality product through the use of high quality materials that promotes collaboration so that the girls are able to make friends, get involved with the principles of optics and have an interesting project to show their parents. I decided to pursue the infinity mirror as it doubles as an everyday mirror that the girls can use for makeup and whatnot, and it also doubles as an optical illusion. In the uh, spring semester of 2019, I was given a unique opportunity to work with Warren Hurd, our lab manager, to essentially beta test the curriculum for a potential class in automation. This was achieved through laser cutting, 3D printing, checking tolerances, uh, ensuring correct fitment, assembly, wiring, and programming of a PLC. If it wasn't for Warren, the programming would have been delayed significantly. As a Jeep owner, I came to understand the struggle of never having quite enough space. Out on the trails, the cargo would be bounced around. It would never end up in the same spot that it, that was, it originated in. This made it difficult to get ready for early mornings turkey hunting, putting on gear, I developed a system that can be used with the aid of a telescoping slide to help load and unload gear and give it security to ensure that it gets from point A to point B, no matter what the road looks like. And lastly, as my peers can attest to, I spent a considerable amount of time redesigning existing French cleats for the manufacturing enterprise desk. Originally, I was designated for install, but I quickly self-selected the French cleats. The old French cleats were made of multiple materials, mainly wood and sheet metal, and had a few design flaws. There was no interchangeability between panels, which caused for unwarranted hassle when putting the panels back on. Overall, I decided to unify the design to allow for interchangeability, adjustment in both the Z and X direction, durability, and decreased variance significantly. This was done increasing the mass moment of inertia on the outer tabs to the female cleat. Doubling the thickness of the cleat, incorporating both slots and holes on each cleat, and using, and using a CNC machine to achieve precision. I wrote multiple CNC programs testing different tooling and the reper repercussions of that tooling, such as time and precision. Every part was inspected after each process. This led to a successful redesign of the French cleat that allowed for adjustability, durability, user-friendly design, interchangeability, and most importantly, simplified. I enjoyed the Speedy program in its entirety, and it helped me solidify my next step. Hello, my name is Stefan Schwenard. So along with a Speedy major, I also have a computer science minor, and these are just some photos of myself with my dog Gator, and then also a white water rafting trip I went on this past summer. So for my design for manufacturing and assembly class, I reverse engineered a Zippo lighter. I started by taking apart the lighter and was able to identify every material for each part and the process of how it's made. And with that information, I created a bill of materials while also creating a SolidWorks model to help to see if our materials were correct. Um, with the bill of materials, I was able to get the price within three cents of the original Walmart price. My next design was my product was my next design was my product design two ergonomic desk desk extension. 
Its functional requirements were to relieve shoulder strain and help keep wrists and elbows in neutral position while working with or on computers for an extended period of time. Um, for this, I did have to complete um, design research related to office workplace ergonomics and test out um, multiples, multiple of my multiple prototypes. And the picture in the middle is the final proof of concept that I made. For my 3D CAD class, I was first given a lawnmower part and measured every component of my part and made a SolidWorks model and, and, and an engineering drawing. Has everyone in the class had a part? So then at the end of it, we put them into a big assembly model. And then while doing this, I was also able to get my SolidWorks associate certification. For my manufacturing enterprise desk, my part was a top curved back panel. I worked with Ryan and we had to test out three different methods to bend the back panel. Um, and we came, up, we came up with our final solution, which was to curve five ace thick ACXF plywood. Um, I then had to make work instructions and process sheets for my part. Um, then when our class split up into the manufacturing and engineering teams, I was put on the engineering team and I had to do the task of taking the class's process sheets that they made it made all of them uniform and follow the template that was given. My last project was my product design three tube filler project for Markham Homage, where my group had to devise or locate a device that will eliminate the ergonomic risks and help keep breakdown and cleaning time to less than five minutes and fill a tube up in less than 15 seconds. Um, for this, we had to design um, we had some design and observational research on their process of how they're filling up their tubes. Um, we had to find our own substitution for their ink that had a similar viscosity um, to the range that they gave. So we had to try multiple methods for this and try to mimic their process and test our own designs. As I also created some CAD models for the designs um, to show Markham Homage. And then with my time at Keene State College, I really enjoyed working in the labs and using SOLIDWORKS to help create my designs. Hello, my name is James Kerwin. Uh, I'm a student at Keene State College. I'm graduating early in the fall of 2020. Uh, a little bit about myself. I enjoy working on vehicles, working uh, whether in the wood shop or just in general and hanging out with my friends. So for my first project, I'd like to talk about my emergency kit. The design goals for this were to have uh, the right, si uh, right size sockets for every uh, lug nut and uh, lug nut type, as well as an apparatus, in this case, a breaker bar to uh, break the lug nuts efficiently off the, uh, off the wire, as well as be able to jump start a vehicle. So for my, fin my final design for this project, I, instead of using jumper cables, which is one of the conventional ways of uh, jump, uh, jump starting a car, uh, I switched to a electronic jump pack. This also added some multifunctionality because that pack can be used to charge a cell phone if needed, and it doesn't require two vehicles to jump start a car. For my, uh, this is a personal project of mine. Uh, I wasn't a fan of the bed frame I had before. There wasn't enough storage under it, so I redesigned it uh, myself just using sketching and was able to keep the cost under $100. For work experience, I've worked off and on for the past five years doing uh, different construction jobs. Two notable ones were a roofing, roofing job I took in the summer of 2019, as well as a, a chimney demo I did earlier this year. For my SolidWorks experience, I've, uh, done, I've done a couple of models here just on my own, uh, on my own time as demonstration. I've been able to learn through the college uh, rendering, um, doing engineering drawings in the program, as well as uh, proper dimensioning. For my uh, Product Design 3 project, excuse me, uh, I made this uh, kinetic sculpture 
uh, for the Go STEM group for the uh, the girls that come to Keene State during the fall, uh, during the summer, excuse me. And uh, this project is to emphasize how light uh, refracts through different filters. I didn't have access to the filters I needed, so I substitute mason jar lids. Um, this incorporates different aspects of physics and balance. For my uh, summary of my experience at Keene State so far, um, I've really enjoyed working with other students. We can all work in a collaborative uh, way where if someone isn't as skilled in one aspect of design, we can kind of fill in and teach each other as well as uh, learning from the instructors. Uh, I'm Taylor Cathcart. I'm a management minor. I like to do things outdoors uh, with my dog, Hoover, there on the bottom left, kayaking with him. I enjoy hiking and photography and travel. Uh, these are some of my things that I've done in my house, just woodworking and carpentry projects. Uh, just some bowls and all that. A lot of hand carving and joinery involved. My Product Design 3 project, I came up with some folding snowshoes. Through observational research, I found that snowshoes are bulky and hard to store. So I sought out to fix that. And by, I prototyped with drawings and cardboard models. And then finally, I'm, I have my blue final model there. For design for manufacturing and assembly, we were tasked to reverse engineer a product that you found that had, I, th I think it was like 14 or more parts. Uh, I went and purchased a DeWalt trigger clamp from Home Depot and disassembled it and measured everything and put it into a CAD model. And then after that, we were able to figure out the direct cost analysis using material weights and guessing on how much dyes would cost and all that. I was able to get very close to the retailer price at $34.93. And then for CAD work, the group engine project for steel, uh, my part was the bottom part there, the cam holder, uh, cam cover and I also have my certificate in SolidWorks Mechanical Design Associate level. And then in 2019 summer, I did an internship at Centaur Vacuum Industry and they create vacuum furnaces for industrial purposes. And I was tasked with doing lots of things, tear down of machines, um, testing and assembling high voltage uh, liquid cooled power cables, which is on the bottom right there, and working with large pieces of graphite. Um, the one on in the middle on the right there is one of the larger pieces of graphite you'll find in the world. <laughs> um, and on the bottom left is actually a heating element that I assembled out of it's all 100% graphite. Thank you. Uh, and one thing that I enjoyed about the Speedy program is I just liked the fact that you could go in and have expertise there to help you basically make whatever you want. Hi, my name is Liam O'Hagan. And I'm graduating with a minor in safety, occupational health and applied sciences. So some things about me, um, what I like to do for fun, I enjoy outdoor activities like fishing and water sports. And some skills I've developed from my time at Keene State is uh, concept ideation, sketching, uh, CAD design, prototyping, and programming. Um, this is um, for my product design two course, and it was a greenhouse irrigation system. So the project product project goal focused on supporting local farming. And to explore this area, I visited Harlow Farm and. Vermont with my classmate Molly O'Connor uh, and we spoke with workers about problems they were facing with the organic farming industry and the major the major problem that they told us was they didn't have a great watering system for their greenhouse 
and therefore they were not getting the desired yield due to the fact that they were not getting proper water coverage of the plants and vegetables inside the greenhouse. So I designed a water system by re-engineering common in-ground irrigation system. And I designed an above ground housing system that allowed for an in-ground system to be above ground. And some takeaways from this was I greatly improved my skills with regards to customer interaction, customer feedback, prototyping, SolidWorks modeling, and 3D printing. So this was for design for manufacturing and assembly. Um, students were required to reverse engineer a product with multiple materials. So the class included a disassembly of the product, identifying the material, material weight, material specifications, and creating SOLIDWORKS models from that. And then we identified manufacturing processes and production costs of the, of the product. So I choose to reverse engineer this utility knife here. And some takeaways I got from this course was I greatly improved my SOLIDWORKS capabilities. And I found many new methods of identifying materials. I also got some cost analysis skills. Um, this was for advanced CAD, and this was the same. Pro I was on the same project as Stefan, which was previously shown in this presentation. And what we had to do was we reverse engineered a two-stroke lawnmower engine. So the students disassembled the motor, took dimensional measurements, and created actual SOLIDWORKS models of their individual parts that they were assigned. And then from there, we all teamwork together and we created a functioning assembly model of the motor. And this greatly improved my SOLIDWORKS skills as long with my teamwork and communication skills. This was for our manufacturing enterprise class. And this course simulated a real production run of custom desks that were designed by a previous class. Students were each given a part to manufacture for the assembly and mine was the top and bottom housing of the bottom shelf. And this, all, this gave us all some good hand, hands-on experience of wood manufacturing. This was for product design three and this was, um, I called this my lathe cover project, but really it was a machine guarding project. And the design problem was that the spindle ha hand wheel on lathes rotates while the machine is on. And this creates um, a caught-in hazard, which is one of the four leading causes of death in industry. So to resolve this issue, I had to design a product to enclose the spindle hand wheel. And after several ideation sketches, I created a mock-up to help me achieve the form, fit, and function. I then designed um, a 3D printed model of the cover which was more ergonomic, user-friendly, and allowed for better fitment. And then I then redesigned the first prototype, which was 3D printed to be injection molded. And I also increased ergonomics, aesthetics, and made it easier for assemble and disassembly. So for work, I currently am an intern at Turmoil Manufacturing. I'm a SOLIDWORKS engineer there. And I've been working there for about seven months in some tasks and roles that I do there. I'm a cabinet designer and I do engineering drawings from the, after I design it on SOLIDWORKS and I write strip it codes for the machines for it to be um, made in the shop out back. And something I really enjoyed during my, my time as a speedy student was continuously increasing my knowledge and experience with regards to industrial design, engineering and manufacturing processes. And I also really enjoyed um, how much the professors and faculty can continuously challenge me in these three areas. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Brandon Bernier. Uh, I like to think of myself as, a, as driven, a designer, a team player, adaptive teacher, a thinker, and an explorer. Uh, I spend a lot of time, or a lot of my free time doing the hobbies, uh, and I plan a lot of my time around those uh, when I'm not working. Uh, this is a product design two project I did. Uh, it in, I basically took a, a lot of the tools out there for uh, eating while you're hiking. They're just an all-in-one package, and I wanted to be able to utilize both utensils separately. Um, and I came up with a concept that clicks together and um, came up with a couple ideas for handles and 3D printed them out.
And then moving into when I actually went to produce the final model, I created a uh, urethane mold, um, a pore mold that I used a uh, 3D printed frame to uh, make the mold and uh, over molded of just a blank and then put uh, a machined stainless steel, three, uh, three or four stainless steel parts in there and poured uh, silicone down over them. And I uh, came up with the final product there. Uh, this is a pet project of mine. I, uh, my girlfriend's parents had a poor little beanie baby that was propping up open their bathroom door. And I decided to uh, create a shark doorstop that went along with their Cape Cod themed home. And I, um, after a year, I kind of revisited it and uh, optimized it better for faster 3D printing. Um, in manufacturing enterprise, as everybody had said, they were tasked with doing a specific part. Um, I had the upper, the top shelf on the desk that uh, holds the monitors. And um, in that class, everybody had to do a work instruction, inspection sheet, routing, time of estimated time of completion, and create a production plan based off of what they found while they made their part. Um, my main job for the class was production manager, and I had to um, oversee when the class was split into two, the en engineering and manufacturing. I oversaw both sides of that project and helped them, uh, integrate any issues in between the two of them, um, where I scheduled and I troubleshot anything that came up and helped everybody with direction. Um, and then one of the main things I did was I came up with the overall production plan based off of um, what everybody else had estimated for their completion time on their own parts. And then uh, earlier on, I had viewed clear bottlenecks and work the whole plan around those. Yeah, this is a product design three project. I did this past semester as I took the course uh, over again, as I really enjoyed designing things. Um, I did this with Molly. Uh, we uh, did a project for the McCullough Shepherd Discovery Center where we um, created an exhibit for them um, where you play, play around with lights and how they interact with them, specifically additive light. And we, this was an early concept um, where you're mixing the red, green, and blue to create white light and the other colors in between them. Um, and when we moved into our final prototype that we were only able to make this as uh, COVID-19 happened, um, came up with a, uh, I came up with a semi-rotating mechanism that allows the um, three colors to move in and out away from each other um, and back towards each other to um, mix the lights a little better and give each person the ability to interact with all the colors on their own instead of having one light per cannon that does one color. Um, and that's the actual 3D printed model. Um, this is my first, the project I did for the first time I took product design three, it's the honey pod. And what I did here was I went and talked to a local occupational therapist and asked her what kind of problems she had in her room. And uh, what I had observed is she clearly, as you can see pictured, um, she had a need for organization and she also had an on the go um, kit that she would, well, a bag that she would take because she travels from school to school, also away from her home school that she stays at. Um, and I came up with the honeycomb design in the end um, and these are some rough models that I did. Um, and the final product was a whole kit that had seven different activities, all focused on fine motor skills and the uh, developing them. Um, and I, you know, it, I contained as much in the kit as I could. And um, I gave it the takeaway ability and um, easy to use purpose. And I also took, I, what I did this semester with this project is I did an independent study, which took it even further and um, did out the costing and estimate to actually see if I could uh, um, uh, manufacture this at a cost effective manner. Um, so, uh, one of my biggest takeaways from the program was probably um, the design courses and uh, learning CAD. That was a big one for me. It helped me throughout all my projects uh, developing shape and form. Um, that's the method I like to use the best. Uh, it allows me to really play around with what's in my head. So.
Well, thanks. This is Dr. Lisa Hicks again. I'll jump in here. Um, Molly made this slide of the TDS, and I think we all uh, were really missing uh, being in the in the TDS for the second uh, half of our semester. Uh, it's it's a wonderful facility that we have there. Um, and I also want to thank um, the many companies that have helped provide scholarships for our students. Um, we have a manufacturing partner scholarship that uh, is supported by Wheel, Wheel and Engineering, Markham Homage, and Hitchner Manufacturing. Um, we've had companies that have funded projects, um, provided internships, uh, work opportunities, um, have graciously opened their doors to tours of their manufacturing facilities and, and then the mentorship they've provided for students. So we're extremely grateful um, for their help. And I also wanna thank uh, Daniel Henderson for all of the work he's done behind the scenes to connect our students with companies and help them get internships and help set up some of these scholarship opportunities. So um, we've had a great semester and I'd like to give everyone a, a big uh, thank you for coming to our presentation. Well, on behalf of the 2020 Speedy class, we have a couple of shout outs. We'd like to thank Curtis Mead, who's our Wood Lab tech instructor. Thank you for all you've done for us with regards to woodworking. And in this, for this presentation specifically, thank you for everything you did for our manufacturing enterprise course. Without you, we would not have been able to accomplish the things we did. Next, I'd like to personally thank Warren Hurd, our metals lab manager. He took me under his wing and while I was working in the lab and he's taught me a great deal. He has a ton of work experience. He presents himself professionally and is always willing to lend a hand. And for that, I'm grateful. We would also like to give a shout out to the Society of Manufacturing Engineers, uh, the Monadnock Chapter 124. Some notable members are Skip Marsh, Vic uh, Kessel, our own alumni, Aaron Hargraves and Curtis Butler. Um, we would also like to give a shout out to our administrative assistant, Barbara Reedon. Even though Dr. Habib hasn't been at Keene State very long, he's had an impact on every student that he's taught. He's very personable, he's very knowledgeable, and we'd, for that we'd like to thank him. We'd like to give a thank you to Jim Pelto. He has helped us come up with our design ideas and taught us how to use tools in the lab. Um, he's been a big help to all of us, I'm sure, throughout our classes. I'd like to give a big shout out to Jim Kyle. Um, for me personally, he was a big help this semester with my independent study, but I know in the other courses that he teaches, he's uh, um, gone well out of his way to help students out on finding information on um, plenty of stuff. And another shout out to Patrick Joyce and Randy Blodgett for really helping us hone our skills in our electronics class. Shout out to Ron Roy. He stepped in at the last hour when we didn't have a CNC instructor and killed it. Um, a shout out to Tim Rowland. He's, he lives pretty far, but he's always really accessible and um, he's always willing to help us out. Shout out to Tim Bollinger for our advanced logs class. And a big shout out to Bob Simino for being a really great professor in our competitive manufacturing class and really engaging all the students in conversations and going on some pretty sweet field trips. And then we'd also like to thank Keene State College, as without the college, we wouldn't be where we are today and wouldn't have been able to learn our valuable skills. And then um, last but not least, we obviously want to thank Lisa. She's helped us so much the past four years and is always pushing us and trying to um, get us on the right track, and um, we are so grateful for you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Molly, and thank all of you. You've done a, a tremendous work, and we're very proud of you. And thanks to our audience for uh, listening uh, and sharing this webinar with us. So thanks again. Now our time is for uh, some questions. Um, and comments. So um, thank you for uh, 
being here with us. And do we have any questions, Mark? Are there any questions from the audience? Hi, Lisa. Yeah, we've got a lot of action on the on the Q and A screen. Um, they want to know about the desk. They want to know about some other things. But I'll start it out. A uh, question about um, what kind of adaptations did uh, you, as the instructor, and the students need to make, uh, considering the pandemic and going online and having to work remotely. Right. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I think um, one of the things that we, we we did have some we tried to have some fun with it. Um, and um, like, for instance, some of some of the companies um, uh, did virtual field trips for us. Um, so instead of the actual field trip, uh, being able to uh, have them walk us through um, their company, which was a lot of fun. Um, Another thing we had to do, uh, I, and I'm grateful to a lot of our software suppliers, um, I reached out to them and uh, they supplied us with um, free uh, temporary seats of the software that we could then um, get to the students. And so uh, the, a lot of the challenge was then all, helping all the students get set up um, in their own homes and um, wherever they, in their apartments to use uh, the software and get connected. Um, yeah, and is there someone else that wants to share uh, an experience that they had um, with, um, you can just go ahead and, and raise your hand if you wanna share an experience that you had with getting set up uh, distance wise. I, you know, I think also Curtis and Warren did a fantastic job. Um, with being uh, our remote lab, so to speak, um, and students would work directly with them and they would help build prototypes and having hand handoffs in paper bags on doorsteps and things like that. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Does anyone else uh, want to uh, step in? I think, um, you know, maybe Brandon, you, you already did have um, some, 3D printing equipment, so maybe you can. Uh... Yeah, that kind of gave us a little bit of an edge in PD3 this semester for sure. Um, Molly's like, yeah, um, it, it definitely did for our team because um, when we got to like getting to that proof of concept at the end, um, I don't know, I spent a week's worth of time just printing all the, just like it was a week's worth of time of actual printing. I, I mean, I, didn't, I, I hit go and I don't, I don't do anything after that, but um yeah it was made it interesting it's it definitely helped us and our group a lot um it was interesting um yeah ide ideating between the team um that got interesting too just trying to figure out like concepts and like conveying it um you know trying to get people solid works to work on somebody's laptop um, like I got my desk, I have it on my desktop, so it's not a problem, but I know one of our other teammates would, you know, it wouldn't work necessarily. And so, yeah. Does anyone else want to share that or, <clears throat> or do we have a, another question, uh, Mark or. Um, I guess, uh, another, another thing, like I said, that some people wanted to know about was, a little bit more about the desk project um, and in particular um, I think this is meant for the the project manager how did you communicate project tasks with the team did you have to use different methods for different team members um, how did I communicate that um, it was just asking um, I guess when on the so on the manufacturing side I kind of had a I kept close track of what got completed each day that we had class and um, we'd have a little powwow at the beginning of class and I just kind of divvy up the work. Um, some people I kind of try to delegate based on, you know, if they were like real, um, like Taylor was really comfortable on the table saw. Um, that's for some people that's, it's an intimidating thing for people. So um, I know he's really comfortable on it. So I, I and I knew he'd be able to get some of the, um, a lot of stuff done quick on that um so i'd stick them there 
and then other people I just kind of um, pass out work say okay we got to do this 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 and this today and pass on that and pass it on to them um, and then on the engineering side they, they kind of just had a to-do list um, and they I would go in and check in on them so and um, anytime somebody came up to me with an issue or they need something to do we just go okay what's next what can we fit in today that's not interfering with what somebody else is doing so yeah okay thanks uh, Lisa, another question about the desk is, um, and and perhaps Ben could could take this because I, I see that he jumped in and and answered earlier on. But if they could talk a little bit about um, maybe some of the job different jobs that everybody did, and if there was uh, some crossover in what jobs that they were doing to uh, to manufacture to to do the different manufacturing steps and uh, uh, for the manufacturing instructions. Yeah, so like Brandon said, um, for the first sort of half of the, the class, we ran it as you were given a certain part and you were in charge of, you know, the manufacturing for that part. Uh, this led to sort of long completion time of the first desk. So in the second half of the class, we broke up. Uh, like he said, Taylor ran the table saw um, I was sort of in charge of the CNC machine for making sure that all of the French cleats got done. And um, I believe it was Connor Foody who was in charge of, of application of the finish uh, for the wood. So that's sort of how the structure went. It was like a 50-50. Yeah, I'll say that the students really, um, it gave them a really good chance to develop their teamwork skills and they really by the end of the semester, they were really coalescing um, and working well together in their teams, so, yeah. Uh, some other questions, uh, some specifics for some, uh, some of the students. Uh, Kevin, can you share your sway bar design? Super interesting. You got anything you can share about that? Yeah, so, um... So basically, I, I didn't really say much about how a sway bar works. Uh, some people might not know, but primarily, um, when you're on the road, for most any vehicle, you have a sway bar that's engaged. And uh, what it is, is it's a torsion action of a bar that goes through the frame most, uh, most of the time. And when you're going around corners, you're, you're, the body of your vehicle tends to want to roll to either side. So this bar... Um, it basically resists the, the, the tendency for the body to roll when you're going around corners. But in an off-road application, when you're flexing and going over large obstacles, you want to be able to have optimum flex. So you want to be able to disconnect that um, relatively easily. Now, in the off-road world today, most people, they have sway bar disconnects, it's called. So that piece I showed that I made uh, that's adjustable, there are two pins that go on either side that you pull to disconnect it of course you have to get out of your vehicle you have to get all dirty you got to pull the pins out you got to flip the arms up it's just a hassle so i decided to design a way to uh, actuate the um the sway bar on and off from inside the vehicle so i have an onboard air tank and i plumbed in airlines to be able to flip a switch and disconnect the sway bar uh, on a moment's notice whenever i need to um, so i made some cad models i made a prototype design um, went through se uh, several iterations of the locking mechanism and uh, I eventually installed it on my Jeep and it's actually still on it today and I use it all the time. Every time I go on the trail, it's actually never failed on me. It's never broken down. Um, just got to keep up on maintenance with it in terms of lubrication. Um, but the Delrin bushing and the brass bushings that I used, they're holding up well. Um, and that's primarily why I decided to use those because of the wear resistance on them. Uh, I believe Delrin is similar to like cutting, uh, cutting board material you would use in, you know, kitchen applications. So it's a very durable material. And of course, brass is as well. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's still on my vehicle. It's still operational today. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without the resources that the uh, Speedy program and the, the TDS provides just because they have all the material, they have the, the design software, the machinery, they have everything. So you can really start from an idea and work your way all the way up to a production version that's usable. And yeah, I think it was a very neat opportunity to be able to do that. 
That's great. I, I will, I'll mention that the, uh, the question, the person who posed the question also really appreciated the, uh, the live action video during your presentation. Yeah. So yeah, I know to... sometimes it's hard to visualize how, how it actually operates. And, uh, a lot of people, they don't, they don't know what it is when they look at it. So I got to, you know, show them how it works and, and everything like that. So I figured <laughs> a video representation of that would be helpful. So that's great. Thank you. Um, another question. Uh, this one's for Evan. How are the shoe soles attached? Dovetail? Uh, yeah, it actually, it's like a dovetail. It's like a sort of like a groove and spline. Um, it was, I had a previous um, version of it that uh, it was just kind of rectangular slots that fit into each other. And I worked with uh, Brandon, who was actually printing the sole from his 3D printer at home. And he noticed some problems with the print and he actually helped me come up with that dovetail kind of, um, joint to, to actually help it print better and actually function better. So yeah, to answer your question is a, it is like a dovetail joint. That's great. Um, so uh, this might be a natural question. We saw a lot of innovative, products and designs that you guys came up with anybody uh anybody selling these or making future plans to uh develop them further well I brandon, think brandon you look like you're smiling yeah brandon <laughs> well, um, go my, ahead my and girlfriend's sitting here in the room she peeked over i sell um some of my 3d printed stuff on etsy so um like that door stop I don't, I don't know what in particular product that person's asking about um I do sell stuff on Etsy um, and looking at the honeypod project, I looked at costing that out to, um, which is expensive, but uh, it's possible um, to figure out whether I can further that. Um, it's, it's, I think it's a, uh, for everybody, it, it'd be a really cool opportunity if you can actually work for yourself. Um, Cause you, you're, you're your own boss right at the beginning of the day and nobody, you know, you're making all the choices, no, no, not dic being dictated by somebody else. So, and uh, also, I think Ben and I, um, we're both Jeep guys, and um, you know, we have a lot of uh, a lot of different ideas about different Jeep parts and uh, the actual arms that uh, I used on the sway bar. Uh, we were, you know, kind of thinking long term and maybe thinking that we could start producing uh, different you know, control arms for, for people who want to put aftermarket, you know, components on their Jeeps. And uh, it's a really big industry, the off-road industry, because people are constantly wanting to, you know, change uh, and upgrade things and do different performance modifications. So um, the sway bar components are, are one aspect of that. And that's something that it, it could be done because people will pay money for that stuff. And, you know, if it's custom made, if you can custom tailor it to their, their needs and wants, then that's, you know, you can, yeah, you can make good money off of that. I don't know if Kevin's talked about it at all, but on the torsion bar itself, there's actually two flat sides that fit into the arm. Um, we were actually hoping to CNC mill uh, two arms and then get the CNC lathe up so that we could actually do splines so that the splines would fit in. Uh, but unfortunately, due to COVID, we weren't able to, to play around with that. But yeah, Kevin and I have definitely talked about going into to business together. Yeah, those splines, it's definitely, um, it's a difficult uh, component of the, uh, the, the arm to machine. And there are ways to do it with the CNC lathe, like Ben mentioned. Um, it's just one of those things where you come into, you run into hurdles and you kind of have to work around it and, and make something that works. And like Ben said, we, we machined, uh, we had two flat pieces on the end of the torsion bar uh, instead of using the splines and that works just fine. So we found... Uh, I found a way around it. And uh, like I said, it's still in use today and it's working great. So, um, yeah. Yeah, great. Thanks, Kevin. So, um, Mark, do we have? Uh... Yeah, we got a, a, I think we've got time for a couple more, Lisa. One is okay. this one looks a little more technical and uh, I want to pass it along. Was a functional slash performance specification generated for the projects? Was analysis and or test performed? to verify compliance to the specification? 
so you're thinking about um, the design projects. So in a lot of cases, uh, in most cases, actually, um, not all, the students uh, did research um, to actually figure out what those functional requirements would be based on what the end user needs are in the situation. Um, in, in one case where we were working on uh, the project, um, Stefan uh, and, and Cam actually were working on the project for um, Mark and Homage, um, they provided some of the uh, specifications uh, so that we had a, a good framework to work with, um, but there was still lots of um, you know, challenges to, to figure out. Uh, and so again, it's both of those types of um, problems are great and we, we do welcome uh, these client-based um, type projects. Um, so, Ben, sure. Um, yeah, so when we, when Kevin and I worked on the French cleats for the manufacturing enterprise, we came up with three different prototypes for three different redesigns of the French cleat. And before we ended up doing any sort of production, we tested them with the get, like we sort of did testing to figure out what tolerances were acceptable for play in the cabinet so that, you know, they were secure enough so that they won't come off, but they're tight enough so that if somebody does kick it, it doesn't come off. And uh, we went through three different prototypes, did the testing, and we settled on, I believe it was 50 thousandths uh, for the French cleats. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Good, good example of testing there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lisa, I see we're maybe getting close to the time that we, uh, we talked about ending. Um, the, kind of a, a good wrap-up question um, for the students and, and might give them all a chance to, to chime in on this is, um, what would you like to see added to the Speedy program? Is there anything missing? Is there something uh, that you've run across that, that, that maybe you, you haven't uh, been able to get the instruction or the information for? Um, I can dive into that a little bit. One thing that I, as I found my path here, it's um, going through the Speedy program and um, finding more interest in manufacturing and did, doing my own personal research in manufacturing and how manufacturing goes on nowadays, um, you see more and more automation happening. And um, we do certainly we do certainly go over you know principles of automation but one great additive we have now since last year is professor habib who is highly skilled and highly knowledgeable in automation processes so i feel like that's going to be a great um contribution towards a speedy program with regards to automation and the future of manufacturing so that's going to be that's going to be something really cool to see within the next um couple of years i think arise for the speedy program automation. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Anyone else want to jump in there? Or we, uh... All right, well, Mark, well, thanks. Thanks, Mark and Misty. And again, I'm really thanks to all of you students who did a fantastic job uh, tonight. And um, if any of you that are um, that are tuned into our webinar, if any of you want to reach out to the students, especially if you have opportunities at your companies, um, please email me and we can get you connected with the students. Um, they're a great, great bunch of students and they've um, learned a tremendous amount and they've got great skills to offer. Um, so again, thanks for joining us and uh, hope we'll see you again soon. Uh, in person, I hope. Uh, so take care.